Hey, guys, what's going on? CareStream Imaging version 8 users. This video is going to be for you. All right, none of that fancy 3D stuff. All right, this is going to be for 2D users. Actually, if you're using 3D and 2D, this is also going to be for you. But this is going to be about customizing your X-ray templates or formats, optimizing the sizing, the sequencing, creating custom mounts, all that stuff. So if you're into that, this video is for you. So let's go check it out. All right, let's get started. So we're in version, CareStream Imaging version 8.0.2. And first thing we're going to do to create some custom templates is we're going to go into our, our little burger menu. Yes, it's called a burger menu. And um, go into our preferences, and we're going to see some tabs and a bunch of options. So this tab over here, it's called templates. We're going to go into that. And at the very top, you can see the path. So this is actually um, where your templates are stored on your computer. And you can change that. And you'll notice that it begins with a C colon. And if you're somewhat familiar with computers, uh, C colon means that's stored locally on your computer only. All right, so that's your C drive, your local drive, whatever you want to call it. Now, if I created a custom template uh, and I created it on my local drive, my C drive, well, if I created this in Operatory 1, for example, and then I go to Operatory 2 and I want to find that template, obviously, I'm not going to see the template that I've just customized because I created it only for the other computer. So you can do one of a couple of things. I can create it again on the other computers, which obviously takes longer, uh, or change the path first to a network drive, to a shared drive. Um, and you can, you'll want to do this on all of your treatment room computers first. Change the drive to a shared drive first, then you can create your custom templates, all right? So don't, uh, don't do it in reverse order. Don't uh, create the custom template, then change the path because it's going to recopy everything over again and you might lose what you've just created. So again, change the drive first. Now, I'm not going to do it. I'm just a local computer. I don't have a network. So you're going to find a shared drive. All right, and you can talk to your IT person as far as which one to use if you're not sure. You'll find the shared drive and change this on each of your treatment room computers. You don't need to change it on your front desk or your private office because you're not taking, you're not acquiring new images on those computers. So whatever you captured in the treatment rooms will show up in your rooms um, as image, images that have been captured. Uh, so you only need to change the path on the computers where you are acquiring new images, okay? So change this first, all right? We're going to assume we've just changed this. Next step, we go into FMS Editor. So we click on that. So now we can see all of the mounts or the templates or the formats, whatever you want to call it, all of these that are currently in your system. And I can do one of a few things. I can create a new one. All right, that's just going to be a blank one. All right, let's close that. Uh, or I can edit what I currently have. So let's say I want my four bite wings and three PAs, but I want to move these boxes around. I want to add another box. I want to modify this. Well, currently you can see my modify button is grayed out. I can't modify that existing standard template in the software. What you can do is create a copy of it though and then modify it so i can create a copy name it to you know whatever you want uh you know recare or whatever now i can go to my one that i just created and now i can modify that okay so let's go through some of these tools so of course you know this is where i'm going to save uh, save a new one i'm really i'm not going to go through every little last feature i'm going to go through the ones that I tend to use the most. Um, so for example, I can highlight any of these boxes and you'll notice there's a couple of icons here. So this says 
magnetic grid, and this one says magnetic frames. So if it's on magnetic grid, when I move my boxes around, it kind of snaps to a particular part of the grid. If I'm on magnetic frames and deselect magnetic grid, then it's going to have an easier time to snap to the next frame over, okay? Um, you can kind of see where it kind of jumps. It will snap to it. Um, I personally think that can be a little bit more challenging doing it either way. I tend to just deselect both of these, and then I have free range to just put them wherever I want, okay? Um, you'll notice if I try to put it and it's layered on top of the other one, it's not going to allow it. It's going to go back to where you came from. So you have to kind of be a little precise in where you put it. But I just like having free range of wherever I want to put it, as long as it's in the right spot, you can put it wherever you want. So if I were to put these back, all right, and if you wanted actually some space between them, you can do that as well. Okay, you'll also see a little numbering symbol or a number sign. And if you put your mouse over it, it will say numbering. And you'll see this is the order in which those images are are captured in the software or the numbering sequence. Of course, you can go out of order, as I'm sure you all know. But if you wanted to change the sequence, for example, if you have, um, have an assistant or hygienist that wants to capture beginning on the patient's left side, uh, you can do that. So you're just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have to complete the numbering sequence when you do this. So like, for example, if you messed up, if you're saying, uh, I want, oh shoot, I want one on this side. Well, I have to start over. So you hit this button, resets it, and then start over to however you want to do it. When you're done renumbering it, okay, we are under the recare format. You can either save it over the top of the previously named format, or you can choose save as to create another one and rename it. If you just save it, it's going to save it with this new numbering sequence that's assigned to recare. Maybe you want to assign it uh, a particular assistant's name. So I can do save as, and we can call it, you know, kids we care, or whatever you want. Of course, you don't have to do that. These are just different ideas if you wanted to, of course. And then you would have two different uh, recares in the system. You'd actually have one that says recare and one that's going to say Kim's recare. Okay, and they're alphabetical. Okay, let's go back. And <clears throat> let's go back into um, modifying the uh, Kim's Recare, for example. Okay, so other things you can do. If I wanted to get rid of any of these boxes, I can highlight the box and select my garbage can. You'll notice if I don't have a box highlighted, the garbage can is grayed out. Um, if I wanted to add new boxes, you can see these down below. First, I'm going to deselect my magnetic grid. Again, like I said, I don't like to use those personally. If you like to use it, go for it. It's all good. Um, and you can see here we've got uh, a size 2 horizontal or a size 2 vertical. Uh, this is going to be a JPEG image. So really any JPEG horizontal any jpeg vertical you can put images into those boxes this is going to be for a larger jpeg image you've got smaller you have a larger jpeg image you can create different types of custom mounts so if i wanted an additional horizontal box i can click number two and maybe i want to put it wherever i want now another thing you're going to see is the grid lines so before I even get back to this, you're going to notice these grid lines. And the grid lines end right here. So any area of the box, if you try to put it outside those grid lines, it doesn't allow you to. It snaps back to those grid lines because that is the area of the actual template. All right. So how do you, how do you change that, for example? Let me show you one easy way to do it, and I'll show you more of a manual way to do it. So actually, let's start out with just four byte wings. So I'll delete the rest of them. I'm holding control on the keyboard so I can select multiple, and I'll throw those in the garbage. 
I want four byte wings like so. I want to maximize the size of my byte wings as I capture. So I can actually create my four byte wings and then I'll go to tools and optimize to screen. All right, so that even uh, gives me larger byte wings. It actually optimizes the screen or optimizes the box size to my screen. So that's an easy way to adjust uh, to maximize the size of your clinical images as you capture. All right. Um, and I'll show you another way to do it here manually in a second. But before I do, uh, these are your, it's your midline. All right. So as you drag and drop an image from here to, to from the right side to the left side, it's going to flip the image. The horizontal line on the bite wing mount really wouldn't do much. But if you're flipping a, a PA from uh, the maxilla to the mandible and you cross over that line, it's also going to flip that image. Okay. All right, now let me show you a little bit more of a manual way to do it with uh, customizing your screen and the sizes. So to change that, slightly counterintuitive, but if I go to File, Properties, and you want to include more boxes, so each box would be smaller, for example, then you actually are going to increase the size, the width, and the height of the, of the properties here. So let's change the height to 150, for example. And if you watch down here, where this is all blank, and this is where the grid lines begin, I'll select OK. OK, now it fills the screen with grid lines, and my boxes are smaller. That way I can include more boxes into a custom template. Uh, or maybe you, um, maybe you want the boxes larger. Maybe I want just four bite wings, and I want all my boxes to be as big as possible, OK? This is going to be the, the midline, all right? And then let's add another number two box, and we're going to put that right there. And if I go back to my properties and change these, so we're going to give, a, give an estimate of 180 and 120. Okay, well, now I've got nice big boxes for my bite wings, but you'll also notice that this one is outside of the grid line. So I can do one of a couple things. I can move all of these over a little bit and make sure that I have room for all those boxes. Or if there weren't enough room, I would have to change those properties again and adjust it where it's a little bit of trial and error to make sure that my entire bite wing is inside of those grid lines. So I would do something like this. Okay, now I can save this as whatever I want to. Okay, so this pops up. So why did that pop up? So some of these boxes had tooth numbers already assigned to them because it was from the standard format that was embedded into the software. I added two more. So I added a couple of more and I never assigned tooth numbers to it. So I need to do that. You'll notice in the properties, here's my tooth numbers. If I click on this one, this one already had tooth numbers assigned. This one did as well. This new one, it did not. So I can just say my left premolar and it automatically assigns. I can say this one will be my left molar automatically assigns for bite wings. And that really makes it easy and assigns uh, tooth numbers. All of the boxes have to have tooth numbers assigned to it or none at all. So you have to pick one. So let's uh, let's uh, let's save this now as Kim's Recare. We'll replace it, and you're good to go. So hopefully this was all helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and comments. What other videos you might like to see that will be helpful? And we'll see you guys next time.